legislations of the law. Stay tuned. Don't touch your dial. Because at the end of the program, you shall know the law. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be speaking this afternoon about rape, the offense of rape. And under the Sexual Offense Act of 2009, it is an offense of a man rapes a female. And rape, say, a man commits the offense of rape if he has sexual intercourse with a woman without the woman's consent and knowing that the woman does not consent to sexual intercourse or recklessly not caring whether the woman consents or not. Now, I really am going to speak in today on marital rape. Sounds interesting, right? So and the next time I'll talk about the actual rape. But I wanted to speak directly about marital rape. And when we think about marital, we think about marriage. All right? A lot of persons believe that because a man and a woman is married, then you know, the, man, the woman is a man's property, so to speak. So he has the right to do anything he feels like doing with her. And that is not so. On the section 5 of the Sexual Offenses Act of 2009, it says, A husband commits the offense of rape against his wife if he has sexually intercourse with his wife in any of the circumstances specified in subsection 3. Remember, I just um, read a little of subsection 3 to you about, you know, without consent. And it went on to say, without her consent, knowing that she does not consent to sexual intercourse or recklessly not caring whether she consents or not. For the purpose of subsection 1, consent shall not be deemed to exist where apparent agreement to sexual intercourse is goes on to say exhorted by physical assault or threats or fear of physical assault to the wife or a th to the wife or to a third party or obtained by a false and fraudulent representation as to the nature of the act or the, the identity of the offender now ladies and gentlemen for the persons who feel that a man cannot rape his wife that is not so the only thing that happened with this act is that it does protect to an extent, the, the man. So if you're in a marital relationship and you're separated from your husband and you're in another bedroom, then of course, if he comes in the room and have sex with you, even if you say no, then that's not rape. It has to be, and the law um, definitely specifies under the circumstances where it can be rape. The circumstances referred in subsection ones are that the spouse have separated and thereafter have lived separately and apart within the meaning of the matrimonial causes act. There is an extens an existence, a separation agreement in writing between the spouse. So prior to filing for divorce, you have to have a document to say, we have agreed. Because of course, persons have homes together, so in the case of a disagreement and one does not have somewhere to go, then you're not going to just pack up and live on the side of the street. But what the law is saying, that if you go in a written agreement to say, listen, this is what's going to happen. Until we go to court and the court decides who gets what, then I'm going to stay in one side of the house and you stay in the other. The written agreement has to be specified that, listen, I'm going to stay in one bedroom and you stay in the other. So therefore... If the person breaches that agreement, then the gentleman, as I choose to call him, have committed the offense of rape. It says proceedings for the dissolution of the marriage or for a decree of nullity of marriage have been and, and instituted. And listen, remember, you know, it has to be that you can't just get up tomorrow and say, my husband and I are having problems. So as a result, I may have a problem, you know, I'm going to go sleep in the next bedroom. And of course, 
and next night come in and him say, you know, me really want my wife. And him come and that you ball out for rape. It is saying that it cannot be done in that way. So because we know that, because the law knows that things does happen in between, it gives you. So if you definitely believe that you want an end to this marriage, then you need to put in writing that, listen, we're going to be living together. And if you can't, if you're not in speaking terms, then what you need to do is to get a third party to get involved so that you get, get an agreement written. I guess, you know, be, either by a justice of a peace who will witness it or a, a lawyer or somebody upstanding that you can know that this is a binding agreement to say that, yes, on such a, a date and time, we went before this person and we did an agreement to say that the marriage is no longer, and for God's sake, you know, persons them have a way if you say teeth and tongue um, are going to meet. Do not every second. This week, you hear say have a girl, so you decide, so you're going to do an agreement. And the next week, you hear say have one baby mother. You know, you're right, you do another ad, an agreement. And two weeks, time, I'm going to make up back. Then, you know, that's not really binding. If you're sure that this marriage, for some reason, is at an end, then you do an agreement until the legalities is sorted out in court. No, another thing that the laws um, protects you with, as it relates to that there have been, there's been a that there has been or granted against a husband an order of injunction, as the case may be, for non cohabitation, non molestation, or ouster from the matrimonial home for the personal protection of his wife, and that's self explanatory. The other point I'm going to make, though is one that's very sad, but it does exist. The husband knows himself to be suffering from a sexually transmitted disease or infection and goes and preys on his wife, then he can be charged for rape. Why? Because of course, he knowingly that he is infected, rapes his wife or have sex with her without her consent with the intention of giving her this disease that he has he has committed an offense. The beauty about this is that if convicted, it is so serious that if convicted, and the law says, a person who commits the offense of rape, whether against section three, which I explained earlier about the definition of rape itself, wholeheartedly, or section five, which I just explained as it relates to marital rape, it is liable on conviction in a circuit court can you imagine? All right, say no, say you chop somebody in a machine, you try, and, and it's unlawful wounding, it try in a parish court. That's what we, use, we normally call resident magistrate court. If you fling a stone and lick a man, um, parish court again. And, you know, some matters like those are tried in the parish court, what we previously called the resident magistrate court. But to show you how serious this these offense are is that the person is actually is liable on conviction in a circuit court and the circuit court ladies and gentlemen is the highest court in the land it not get no higher than that we can say that again when you're convicted in a circuit court it really does not get any higher than that so what they do is that they take it to the um, parish court initially to complete the file um, they now call it the committal proceedings airing. So therefore, at that stage, the matter is then decided if it moves on to the circuit court. But, but it is not a matter that can be tried in the parish court. So long as there is enough to bring the matter to trial any at all, it is actually triable in the circuit court. And it says, it's liable on conviction in a circuit court to imprisonment for life or such other term as a court considers appropriate, not being less than 15 years, or commits the offense. Now listen, when you hear about life imprisonment, it's not a joke thing. Because if, if a judge say, for instance, sake, you are a sentenced to life imprisonment, 25 years before parole, or 15 years before parole, let me just say to you that it means 
that you are going to be spending life imprisonment and the possibility is if a parole officer gives a good report on you and of course you have a clean record while incarcerated consideration may be given for you to be released before life but let me tell you something this is as serious as the law takes it that a man can rape his wife Prior to 2009, that was not the case. But I guess the persons who are in charge actually look at it and see that, you know, persons are actually taking advantage of a situation and a man feel that he owns a woman and as such for the rest of her life, especially if they're under the same roof, then therefore, you know, you belong to me. No, the law has now put things in place to protect a woman. The domestic violence is nothing that any of us, you know, hug up, so to speak. The, the domestic violence is getting so rampant that, you know, you, you actually scoff when you hear it. And there are so many females that is going through the domestic violence that does not know their rights, does not know, you know, that although you are married to a man, you know, for 15 and 20 years, then you still have the right, if you are so abused, to separate yourself from that abuse. And of such, I think that's what the law thought about when they actually put these um, laws in place from 2009 to protect females under the Sexual Offense Act. So let me just recap quickly. You cannot live with your husband and decide, uh, you know, me I go go in a one in the bedroom, go sleep. And he comes in there and interfere with you or rape you, so to speak, and you report it. It's not rape at that stage because an agreement has not been put in place. Do not misunderstand, though. If whilst having this, without this agreement, if whilst having that, you know, sexual intercourse with you, for any reason, he actually harms you in any other way, whether I'm using a knife... What I'm thumping your face, what are, anything else he does to you, do not think that because I'm saying that because an agreement was not put in place, you don't have a case. It not, might not be a case of rape, as well as it, as it might be because of how it is, um, what is used to constitute this offense. Again, if he has a sexually transmitted disease, which he passes on to you knowingly that he has it, then of course you have a case against him. And you. Um, I'm asked a question in studio. <laughs> and I'm asked a, I'm asked a question in studio. But for the persons who are, because this, the disease that this, that Cassidy asked me about, that out, outdated nowadays, you know, you know, it, it, we know, we don't have them diseases again. So, I, I, you know, and let me just quickly say, you know, the, you know, the gun thing we used to have road, right? The gun with the wire. Right, but Cassidy no mind have that again, that out of style. So we talk about HIV and syphilis and other things that, of course, are, can stay in your system for many, many years and yet still can be very harmful to your health. So I'm just saying that men, if you have your wife and you realize that for some reason the, the marriage have broken down and you're still in the same home with her and there's a written agreement. Now listen to me carefully then you ought to know that you, if you need certain things, you know, by, I mean, you know, in the, in, the, in the face of God, it's wrong if you go elsewhere. But I can tell you that if you don't go elsewhere and if you interfere with her, then you are liable to conviction in a circuit court for life imprisonment. I mean, and no less than 15 years. So let us walk the straight and narrow path. Let us know our rights as females and as males. And I don't know about, I think lovemaking is supposed to be something consensual between two adults. It's something, to, so, you know, that's supposed to be nice and, and bubbly and, and persons are supposed to be enjoying it. And I, for one, am, are glad for the Sissoka unit. That, of course, with this unit, we as females does feel protected. At, because we now know that we have a unit, so to speak, that is going to protect us in anything that happens to us in a sexual way. Before this, the, the Sissoka unit came about, I can't recall. That's a nice term to use. Eh? A long time in the year, although it was in style once. I can't recall what used to happen to us. But females... If you're in a matrimonial home, 
and you have separated from your husband and you're sure so no separate because i don't want tomorrow when you know one little couscous and couscous and you call it separation and you run go and somebody in there laugh off them face straight 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 and i saw the way god jail now because the face say oh no own the woman them so them can't say no not not go so we don't know own anybody so therefore if the lady wants to go let her go and go mean if you turn a bill of house she not gonna pick up her like a dulce mean and leave you can't stay there laugh and even the next year if you pack up him like a dulce mean and leave but until things are put in place in a proper way then you both have to go you know live in that house respect each other one walks to the back door, one walks to the front door. But for God's sake, when night comes, don't cross our path in the bedroom. If an agreement or an arrangement was put in place, or if the court said, because a lot of times, females feel that you're physical with them. You know, it is called separation by law. And on, you know, I have a, 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 a very good friend of mine that I want to say big up to. She's, you know, Inspector Claudette Hepburn of the Sissoka unit in Kingston. She's a guide to me, you know, and I want to tell her this good evening because I know she's tuning and she's listening. But I just want to tell persons that we as females have rights. And as such, we are not to give up our rights because we feel like, and don't be ashamed. Another thing why we don't report a lot of things is because we are so ashamed of what happened to us. Now, let me say something to you. If somebody have violated you, I mean... You, you must feel away because you're a human being. But, you know, do not let embarrassment make you do not stand up for your right. Because, and that is why a lot of females, and we're going to be touching domestic violence very much so in February because the Jamaica Constabulary Force is really hard now and have a zero tolerance for domestic violence. So we're going to be helping our females. So we'll talk further about that. But females, if you're in a relationship, in your home, if you're married, you're separated, we're asking you, please, if you're sure you're separate, go and get something but in writing to say, I live in this house until things are sorted out, and I do not want to be molested by my husband. That if he crosses the bedroom door and demands sex, then therefore you have the right to report it by law. All right? I'm going to be closing now because guess what? Time flies when you are having fun. For the persons that have been listening to me, I want to tell you thanks. For my judge, who I know listens to me, I want to tell you thanks. ASP Orton, Troyville Orton. Good evening, sir, and thank you very much. And for all the persons on Facebook Live, especially Jason Clark, we call him Portland Image. Cassidy, you see that nice logo something there, have for me something, something there. Clean, nice something there. It came all the way from the United States of America and it did not take any visa for sending it down here. Jason spent about, I don't know if he spent about five minutes doing it, but he's good like that. And I want to say big up to Jason this evening, Clark, um, Portland Image. They have some other name when they call him. You know, they push them and they cat them and them. They're brothers of them. But ladies and gentlemen, thanks again for tuning in and for listening. And know that you have the right as a human being to protect yourselves, all right? I want to say thanks this evening to our kind sponsor, Native Order and Equipment Rental Services. I want to tell, say thanks to the support of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. I have my sisters who are police officers from St. Mary that are actually joining in with me to broadcast this program. All right. So thanks again, everyone. And until we have another program, I'm going to just encourage you to continue to tune into Styles FM. And of course, I'm not saying without an apology that Styles FM is the number one station around. And everybody know that. Everybody should just log on, log on, funny something. All right. So thanks to our kind sponsors. And of course, my engineer, Cassidy. Him look shy and something about nice school guy and him full of manners like that. Right, Cassidy? Okay. I shall in ball and everybody on my Facebook live. Mm, love on you. You know, I can't call her on her name. Marcia Smith. I mean, I not call anybody's name. Hi, everyone. Right. So, do remember, you can email me regarding the program about questions about the laws of Jamaica or to be a part of the program if you are at the department and is abreast of the law. You can email me at know the law at stylesfm.com and that's all in lowercase and that's no space it's know the law at stylesfm.com that's it for today's episode of in the know of the law until next time this is your host Delrose Green Sergeant of Police DG Angel saying you now know the law God bless you and walk good Mwah.
da 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 da